All right, LDW MMAC, man, look, let, let, let's cut the crap. Let's everybody cut the crap, okay? Listen, I like being balanced. I, I'm biased, but I am very balanced. And unfortunately in this fight, there really was no balance for Tanisha Tennant. There was none. Because see, before this fight even got announced, Tanisha Tennant was already at a disadvantage. First of all, okay, Tanisha Tennant had to fight up at Featherweight. Now everybody know, you've ever watched Tanisha Tennant fight, she's a legit, pure bantamweight, through and through. The girl don't even walk around at 145 pounds. I kid y'all not, Tanisha Tennant don't even walk around at 145. She probably walk around slightly under that, okay? Tanisha Tennant is a legit bantamweight. So first she had to go up, move up, and fight Danielle Wolf. Now, why she gotta move up? Why Danielle Wolf didn't have to move down, or why couldn't they find her an opponent that was a bantamweight? Like, why couldn't they find her a legit bantamweight? It's a lot of legit bantamweight prospects out there. A lot of them. But they chose to put her in there with uh, Danielle Wolf. Now, why? Why is that? Why? It's like, okay, Danielle Wolf got to prove herself, but Tanisha Tennant got to walk on damn water. She got to walk on water. Okay, first, she got to fight the girl. And, and let, me, let me tell you, Danielle Wolf came into the fight, rehydrated up like a mother. Danielle Wolf probably came in there close to 160. You can look at Tanisha Tennant and tell. <laughs> She still came in at about just under 145. She don't carry the weight like that. I don't care, her metabolism high, it don't matter, okay? Tanisha Tennant came in still light. Ninja Wolf had a noticeable size advantage, noticeable. It don't matter who you fighting, you can be skilled, you can be, but if somebody, if the size advantage is there, okay, you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle, you are. And of course she had to fight the judges. She had to fight them too. She fought those judges because, you know, let's, let, let's face it, okay? We knew that Tanisha Tennant was not winning this fight on the scorecards. She wasn't going to do it. Wasn't going to happen. Tanisha had to get a stoppage. Now, let's talk about the fight. So, round one, I gave it to Danielle Wolf. Even though Tanisha Tennant landed more strikes, I felt like Danielle Wolf landed the more effective strikes in round one. I felt she did. Um, she staggered Tanisha Tennant once, or she hit her, and Tanisha got off balance, okay? When I watched the fight again, it actually looked like Tanisha just fell off balance, but she wasn't, like, hurt. Um, but Danielle Wolf landed some solid shots. Round two, Tanisha Tennant almost got a stoppage. So, to me, round two was a 10-8 round. Round two was definitely a 10-8 round. Okay, by hands, none. Tanisha Tennant damn near got the stoppage. So, now, let, let's really talk. Let's talk about round three. So, you mean to say that <laughs> Danielle Wolf can pull guard. She can pull guard, and she can attempt for a gear team that wasn't even sunk in. She can just lay there. While Tanisha Tennant was landing strikes, while she was in a guillotine attempt, landing strikes, moving around, Tanisha gets out of the guillotine and starts giving some really nice ground and pound. I gave round three to Tanisha Tennant. She outlanded, she outstruck Danielle Wolf, outstruck her. Okay, clearly, you can see, you can go look at the stats. And when we look at the whole fight, Tanisha Tennant outstruck Danielle Wolf. She landed more. Okay, a lot of the shots that Danielle Wolf was throwing, Tanisha Tennant was moving and dodging and catching and rolling. And she was catching and shooting a lot of those shots, so those shots wasn't even landing. Wasn't landing. The leg kicks by Tanisha Tennant, they were intense. <laughs> Danielle Wolf felt them. Okay, she almost got the stoppage. I had Tanisha Tennant winning two to one. I had a two to one. But see, nowhere was this fight even fair, man. The girl had to fight somebody damn near 15 to 20 pounds heavier, okay? Had to do that. Okay, came in. We already knew the judges were pretty much biased. They were biased, and they were going to give Danielle Wolf the victory no matter what happened, okay? It's, guys, that's what it is. That's what it is. They gave Tanisha the obvious round. They gave her that round, okay? But rounds two, rounds one and three were Danielle Wolf's rounds? Really? What, what, what fight were they watching? You mean to say somebody can lay there in a guillotine that wasn't even sunk in, right? They can control that. that that's, that's called a controlling posture. While one person's still throwing strikes. Danielle Wolf didn't even have it sunk in. Tanisha Tennant there, if she land in the guillotine, she gets out of it and then does her own ground and pound to legit 
take the round over. Okay? To legit take it over. So now what? Okay, of course, the judge is on the scorecard. They're going to say, huh, nope, you didn't get it. This is the kind of stuff that we be talking about. This is the kind of stuff that we be talking about. This is the kind of stuff that I be talking about. It is, like, and, and it's, it's ridiculous. And you know what they're going to do next? If Tanisha Tennant gets another opportunity, because, you know, first of all, she went into the Invicta tournament, the Phoenix Series won that, and then you had people hating on that. You had people hating on the fact that she won the damn Invicta tournament. Oh, hating, hating on that hard. Hating on it hard. She go in there and she do what, you know, all the other people ahead of her in that tournament did. She beat everybody put in front of her. But then you got people running around to my, oh, well, she ain't really fighting nobody. I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, our people, we have an uphill battle. We got to do twice as much. We got to do twice as much. And then to have Dana White award her a contract, she during there get stopped. That, that, that sealed the deal for me. I already knew what was up. I already knew what was up. You can definitely see who the most skillful is. Tanisha Tennant, you know, Tanisha Clint, uh, Tennant was dominating the clinch position. Okay. Chad in the clinch. Now, Danielle was getting out of those clinches, but Tanisha Tennant was controlling them. Okay. Trying to keep the bigger opponent on the cage. She did a decent job of that. Got back to the center of the octagon, was countering the hell out of Danielle Smith, who's supposed to be this boxer with these great hands. Now what? This is amazing. And Danielle Wolf gets a contract based on that crap. <laughs> she get a contract. She was almost stopped, almost put out of there. Danielle Wolf turtled up in a shell, covered up. Danielle Wolf covered up. She was like, nope. So to me, and even if it would have been a draw, I still would have been partly okay with that. Even if it would have been a draw. Okay, I, I could have been, I, be, I could have been all right with a draw. But to give her the whole fight and all the judges saying the same thing? Nah, come on, man. Come on. Come on. Them guys, they definitely weren't watching round three. And, and of course, you even had the, the comment. You even had Bisbean. Even Bisbean. You know, he was like, yeah, man, Tanisha Tennant, you know, she, 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 uh, you know, she all ended her. She you know, they were like, okay, how did they come to this decision? But then, see, when Dana White gave her the contract, I already knew. I already knew what it was. Okay, I already knew. And I knew Tanisha Tennant didn't have a chance in hell to even make this fight. I, I wasn't going to happen. And she'll come back to the contender, you know, the contender series probably. But you know what they'll do? You know what they'll do then? She'll come back and they'll give her another big old opponent. They'll make her move up and wait again and fight somebody who's bigger. Somebody who can hydrate up to 160, 165 pounds when they get in the, in the octagon. And she'll have to do it all over again. You see, it's a no-win situation for her. And I'm going to tell you, man, Tanisha Tennant, she outspoken. Especially when it comes to her people, she outspoken. She is. And I like that about her. But she ain't going to catch a fair break. It's, it's just not going to happen. She ain't going to always have to be ready to fight against these big opponents. And I think even Tanisha felt like she wanted to fight, like she looking. Like, come on, man. Come on. Tanisha was tagging her. And I'm talking about like Danielle would hit Tanisha. Tanisha would bag up, shake that off. Tanisha hit Danielle. <laughs> Danielle looked like she was about to go. And Danielle was getting hit. I don't even think Danielle figured she was going to even get hit like that in this fight. Because every single analyst coming into this fight, they was hey, look, they had Danielle Wolf the favorite. They had Danielle Wolf the favorite. Like, are, are you serious? <laughs> Man. And the girl got a contract. I, I, I still can't believe she got a contract. But y'all know, man, they want to put somebody in that featherweight division. That's what they want. The UFC, they want to put another hope in, in, in the featherweight division. They want to put them there and, you know, put her in there to be a contender, to have somebody that they can try to, you know, market or say, hey, look, we got somebody in the featherweight division. We got them. We got them. Okay. Somebody who can fight Felicia Spencer. Somebody who can fight Megan Anderson. Okay. So you're moving her into a dead division, into a division that he ain't got no intention of building. He don't want to put no skillful people in that division. So you're going to move Tanisha Tennant up and make her fight up in that division, in a division that she don't even fight in. But the Bantamweight division is flourishing. You got a lot of fighters in that division that she can deal with. But you chose to give her a featherweight opponent. So you had no intention, really, of inviting this woman. I think even if Tennant would have won, he probably would have made up some excuse like, oh, she need to work on her skill set or something like that. But they, they had no intention of inviting Tanisha Tennant. No intention. Tanisha would have had to win by a brutal knockout. 
And you know what? And even then, I think if Tanisha would have got the stoppage, they still would have made up some kind of stupid excuse. They still would have made up an excuse. She wouldn't have got in. She wouldn't have got in. And you know what? It's a damn shame, man. It's a damn shame that they had to, they had to get this girl to the contender series. They had to get her there so they can take her O. Okay? They had to get her there so they can take her O. And probably she ain't going to get a shot at the Invicta title. She ain't going to get a shot at that. But then you got people like Miranda Maverick. Now, they can win the Phoenix tournament. They can win. And then they get invited. You got people like Miranda Maverick who can do the same thing Tanisha did, go out there and win the Phoenix tournament. Oh, they get invited to the UFC. And you know what? And it's not like the 135-pound division got like an overkill of people in the division. Look, they need people in the Bantamweight division. They need people. Tanisha Tennant is a solid fighter. She's solid. She's solid. <laughs> but we'll never know because she it's going to always be at a disadvantage for her when she try to get into the UFC. Unfortunately, Tanisha, sister, we follow you. We, we support you. But I'm just a real finna tell you real, okay? They, they're not going to give you that opportunity. They're going to give you an opportunity. But, you, you know, you're going to have to walk on water or you're going to have to walk through damn a pit of fire. Okay, you're going to have to walk on, on fire to get it. They're going to give you an opponent twice your damn size. They're going to give you an opponent who's bigger than you. And you're just going to have to go in there and you have to do what you did. And I know. And we could even argue that the referee should have stopped the fight in round two. We can argue that. Because Danielle was covering it. She wasn't returning any strikes. And there go that thing. And, and, and there go that, you know, okay, so what, what's the rule? Is it referee discretion? How many unanswered strikes do you have to throw before they stop the fight? My <laughs> God, dog, man. Hey, sister, keep your head up. Keep your head up, okay? We got your back on this channel.